very pleased to introduce today's keynote speaker. Pat Neal is a long-standing resident of Manatee County. He's a family man, a businessman, and a former Florida legislator, legislator and senator. He's the president and CEO of Neal Communities, a company that has been recognized by the press, its customers, and even their competition as one of the finest home builders in the region and even the country. Pat Neal's been building homes for three decades, actually a little more than that, and he does more than simply build homes. Pat and his team build communities, and they do it quite effectively. Most recently, in 2010, Neal Communities caught national attention for their sales success when Builder Magazine placed them number 94 among builders nationwide based on their number of closings. 272 closings in 2010, making Neal Communities the highest ranking locally owned builder in Sarasota and Manatee counties. Neal was also awarded the best home builder in 2010 by both the Bradenton Herald's People's Choice Awards and the Sarasota Herald Reader's Choice Awards. Biz 941 ranked Neal Communities as number 36 in terms of gross revenue generation in Manatee and Sarasota counties. And Pat Neal is right on track to close another stellar year in 2011, which is truly impressive in these challenging economic times. I ask you now to join me in welcoming Pat Neal to tell us how he does it. Ladies and gentlemen, Pat Neal. My intent is that we start uh, with the past, talk a little bit about the present, the change in the demographics, who buys from Neil and everyone else in our region, a little bit about the um, demographic boom and uh, what I call uh, the population clock that, uh, that clicks on all of us, and then we'll finish with a little bit about Florida. New homes in southwest Florida. We're right here to the right of these red bars. We, of course, have had the worst housing recession in history, worse in total uh, decline in home starts uh, than the Great Depression. This was a recession caused by the financial markets primarily serving the home building industry. So this has been a nationwide crisis, not a nationwide crisis only here in Florida, in our whole nation. You can see that we are coming back, but we are not coming back anywhere near the way we used to be. Housing, and housing provides about 2.6% of our gross national product traditionally. In these last years, only it's been about only 1% of our gross national product. So the effect on housing affects all of us in the United States. It affects President Obama. And unless we learn that housing is an important part of our business overall, we're not going to be able to fix our overall economy. That's what this slide says. Typically, we're used to the bars up about the 5 6% level if they're at Less than 2%, that's a bad thing. In Sarasota and Manatee County, there's about 23,000 people who used to be in the home building and land development business. Right now, there's about 8,900. That means there's 14,000 people doing something else, not doing anything, looking for a job or watching uh, the plaintiff's ads in the morning, uh, plaintiff lawyers in the morning TV. And uh, my own view is that we need to get them back to work at Neal or uh, another place like Neal. This is a complicated graph. Uh, Neil primarily watches this green. <clears throat> We're interested in new homes. However, it should be said that new homes are only about 9% of the total number of homes sold. Um, we should be watching in a, a macro basis the uh, blue line, existing single family home closings. And we should be watching the red line, existing single family home prices. That's about 91% of the economy. This is about 9% of the economy. You can see the trend. It's definitely upward. Home builders in this region are constrained in part uh, by credit, in part by lack of confidence, in part because we've had, we have not only our inventory, but our shadow inventory, which I'll talk about in just a second. This is a very important graph, maybe uh, the most important graph I'll show you today. For those of you interested in calculus, 
Jeremiah, figure the area of the left-hand side. And then figure the area in the right-hand side. Which is bigger, Jeremiah? OK, what that means is on the left-hand side was the uh, net difference between total production and total closings. And we created an excess, probably of eight or 9,000 homes here. But we've used up about 11,000 homes on the right-hand side. And what that means is that our inventory is much lower than it usually is, about 2.7 mo months in Manatee, Sarasota County, compared to an equilibrium of five or six months. Why is it slower? Because of lack of confidence. Lack of confidence. I hate to quote uh, President, Theodore, uh, President Franklin Roosevelt, but he says all we have to fear is fear itself. And that's what's driving the lack of activity in Sarasota and Manatee County. And the things we've read, we need to overcome that because in truth, supply and demand apparently uh, <clears throat> met this tangent and you can see a shallow uh, climb outward. Oh, this one is the one we watch a lot. Uh, at the top, our region was producing uh, nearly 20,000 new homes a year. Um, I made a mistake. About $20,000 a month in Florida. 20,000 a month, 240,000 a year. Now we're doing about 27,000 a year. Only about 12% of the total production. A bad slide for those of us in the home building industry, uh, but it's gonna change. Jobs are important. <clears throat> uh, if you look at construction on the left, that's the part we care about, but we should worry about manufacturing. Our G GDP, uh, total gross national products fallen from about 16% to about 9% in uh, manufacturing. The third is finance. Uh, the fifth is professional and building. Uh, the sixth and seventh were the only ones that went up. Um, education and health, hmm, and it says professional and, and business. Uh, for the first time this year, government employment has gone down. We actually had not seen a decline in government employment. In fact, in 2009, 32% of our buyers in our um, non-retirement section were public employees. Now, the tax revenues have caught up, or actually declined at the rate of the rest of the economy, so there's lots of layouts, layoffs in government. I'm not making a value judgment on that. The important story for Neil and people in my industry is that we're still losing construction jobs uh, because we've learned to do more with less. Neil will build this year more homes with 86 employees than we did in 2005 with about 160 employees. And the people to my right would say they're working a lot harder. I think that's true. But we're also much more electronic, much more streamlined, and we've learned to adapt to the current economic realities. Um, this is a little bit about Manatee County. I don't mind saying we've prospered much more successfully than Sarasota County. We have 2.2 uh, times as many home starts as Sarasota County. I think largely because of Manatee County's business atmosphere, because of Lakewood Ranch, and because we, for a while we had about a $10,400 per house differential in impact fees. Um, Commissioner Hayes, Commissioner Chappie, we saw a dramatic increase in the sales we were able to make in March, and you, Commissioner Bussell, uh, and any other commissioner who I didn't happen to see. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, hi, Robin. <laughs> Commissioner DeSabatino, I, I want to make sure I get all the commissioners right. Uh, we had a dramatic increase last year because we got a competitive advantage over Sarasota County. They happened to meet the competition, but still, homes are built in our communities. I'll talk about Charlotte, uh, perhaps, with this slide. Manatee County's lot supply is going down. Neil is building lots uh, everywhere. Uh, Sarasota County still has a very high proportion of lots. You'll notice that Charlotte has 1,318 months, do that math, about 110 years of lots at their current production. That's, of course, because of the 120,000 lots built by General Development Company, um, 1959 to 1972. Charlotte County is a special story uh, about the home construction business in this state. Uh, but Manatee is beginning to recover, and it is because of policy changes as well as the good business at atmosphere, and because Lakewood Ranch is a significant place in this state. Permitting activity is about the same story. Manatee is yellow. Sarasota is uh, green. Uh, I like the Manatee, car, Manatee uh, slides just a little bit better. Prices. 
Who cares about house prices? Prices. Look at the bottom of this chart. The recent bars are bigger. Below $200,000, we sell more homes than we have sold since the late 90s as an uh, industry. It's about the same from 200 to 240,000. Above 240, you'll see the bars are much lower. So we can look at on that in three, two or three different ways. One from a public policy perspective, I think as a home builder, is a good thing to be able to build and sell a new home from 110,990. Uh, that provides housing for all Americans uh, from free enterprise without any governmental involvement, and that's a good thing. Two, it provides jobs and employment for the people who work for us. We has, have, as I said, about 86 in home building, about 100 in hospitality, but about five or 600 people who work on our jobs uh, every day. And they're mostly working in these three bars to the left. Although here at the country club, we're certainly moving to the right. Um, I say finally at Neil and most of the builders, we found a whole new demographic that didn't used to buy from us. We call it uh, the new Florida home buyer. Um, people whose um, demographic uh, clock has been ticking stopped thinking about their retirement home in 2005 or 2006 when they were 60. Now they're 66 years old. Six years later and they say, well, if we're going to retire to Florida, Fred, um, we need to retire now. So we now sell quite a few homes in this mid-range price to people who have their first Florida home, but they keep their home in Minneapolis and they plan to sell it at a later date. Uh, the short story is there's definitely a uh, place in the market, especially below 300,000. Hmm. Um, let's see if I can do this in my fingers. Let's name the, the 11 major employers who've left our town in the last 10 years. Tropicana's research and development. I used to sell lots to TROP. TROP's finance, TROP's, TROP's marketing, Wellcraft, Chriscraft, Fountain, Manatee, Alden Industries, Heistat. I think Milton Roy is still here. Is, Sharon, is Milton Roy still here? I think they're gone. Uh, Anderson. Think of the industries that we've lost in our community, mostly in manufacturing. What have we gotten? We're, of course, a retirement town. Our big cash flow is retirement and Social Security. So we got orthopedic new hips at Blake. We got uh, steaks at Applebee's. We have the uh, Polo Grill. We have new homes at Lakewood Ranch. But that's the business of our community right now. And unless we change that, that will continue to be the business of our community. I'd like to say, perhaps with some controversy, that that's the business of this region. We need to get used to the fact that our manufacturing base is leaving. Think of the last time they put an addition on PepsiCo's Tropicana plant. Sharon, they used to build that plant every year. Now they're working on the bottle plant right now. The bottle plant, a fairly low-tech enterprise, but they're working hard in St. Lucie, and about half the juice, of course, comes here on a tanker at Port Manatee. Ruan dedicates 20 tanker trucks that don't do anything but go from Port Manatee to TROP, and that's a change for our industry. Um, I don't mind saying, I don't think necessarily that's a good thing. It's certainly not a good thing for employment, but I'd like at least to share my thoughts about how our economy uh, is working, and it's working a lot better than Sarasota County's which has had negative um, employment growth during that same time. I missed one. Eaton Hammer and Milton Roy uh, have both uh, declined in our state, in our local community. Here's something about our new customers. <clears throat> uh, these are our new first Florida buyers. They're young, about 58, 59 years old. They still have the home in Minneapolis. These are our uh, first time home buyers. They buy under FHA uh, 203B, the same program, quote, that got us in trouble before, although the credit standards are higher. Anybody with a job and a FICO score of about 640 uh, can buy a home from Neil. Um, we can contribute 3.5% to their down payment, I believe. And so, for the most part, anybody can buy a home just as they could before, but they have to have a job and a good FICO score. 32% of our working, class, uh, working age customers were public employees until recently. That's changed a little bit. Uh, in fact, those numbers are flipping. This is uh, an ugly slide. <laughs> uh, Craig, I worried about this slide. This is the Bermuda Triangle of housing. We think that, that it's going to blow away soon. 
we have about 16,000 homes vacant. We have an unknown shadow inventory because of the robo signing crisis. We don't know what the shadow inventory is, but there's some shadow inventory, and that affects housing prices, although housing prices are going up. Uh, we have vacant homes. Neil doesn't compete too much for vacant homes anymore because they've been vacant for one, two, or three years, and they've been stripped, and the pool is green, and uh, the coil, uh, the uh, condenser is gone, so people don't really look at that. But the real issue for confidence is employment or unemployment. The president was on the TV the other night. National employment is still well above nine. Our employment is at 12.7 because we're so dependent on places from other states. And unless we solve these three circles, we're not going to make a big change in how our local economy functions and how our housing economy functions. Uh, these are the uh, these are ground central for states in the housing crisis. Uh, you see our state among them. Mostly they're Sunbelt states that grew during the times of the uh, good times, except for Michigan and some of the Rust Belt states that uh, are Michigan and some of the Rust Belt states. Uh, here's a very important slide, second most important slide that you'll see, I believe. This is real income charted against time. Look at women. Women are doing, quote, pretty good compared to men. They topped out at about 2004. Female household income in the United States declined about 4% in the last uh, four years. But look at, these, look at these poor guys in the red. Look at this, Craig. What happened? Men started going out of style in about 1972. And uh, in 19, 2006, the women kicked us out of the house. I don't know what happened. But men are going out of style. I don't know. Uh, never mind. Households, and then you add those two together, we have a decline in household income in the United States in real terms. That's not a good story, and it's a story that we as an industry, we at Lakewood Ranch, we in Florida, we as Americans have to change if we're going to change uh, the way our future thinks. Um, our current president believes we change that by adding more government jobs. I'm not sure that's the way we do it. People who, who here is an employer? Come on, everybody here is an employer. Who added jobs this year? Hmm. Who uh, reduced jobs this year? Well, I just like to say we're in charge, and the world's going to look like we produce it, Craig. And I'm, I, we're in the business of creating jobs and prosperity and happiness. I think everything I do, if I sell, build, and sell a home for a customer from Minnesota, I think I improve their life. That's part of the economy. They vote with their dollars. They come to our state, and I think they'll continue to come to our state. But they're not going to come to the state the way they used to as long as these bars are the same, and they're buying smaller homes. Uh, Neil built a home in 1968 at 960 square feet. We currently build a home at 947 square feet. A very nice home for singles again, uh, or a, a mom with one child, or a widow. Uh, so that, we're fine with that, but we didn't build 947 square homes, foot homes uh, until very recently. <clears throat> OK. 78 million boomers. Started in 1946, the population began to increase. Uh, increased until 1964, where there was a sociological change about females and childbearing and the number of children born per household. Uh, subtract, subtract 1946 from uh, 2011, those people are 65. Subtract 1955 from the current year, those guys, people are 55. Those are our customers. And they are a big population cohort. They're the people with whom I do business. Then they're replaced before Gen X by uh, folks born 1964 to 76. And you see a declining number. In Florida, a male, on the average, lives uh, before death or go goes back to Ohio about 11 years. A female lives about five years longer. Neil, of course, sells about 20% of its homes to uh, females without males. That I think might have to do with those uh, charts that we saw. Um, I don't know why I put this slide in here, Ivor, do you? I guess I just want to talk about our mortality. I, uh, this is what we're all about in the home building and retirement industry, and we're all in the retirement industry, and I would like you to just take a second and watch these four bars and then watch these four bars. From now to 2022 is the time that we're really going to make hay, 1955 plus 60, I guess that's, uh, if you retire at 60, huh, is that 2005? 
2015. Okay. So we think we're going to have uh, population increase for males until about 2016, 17, 18, for females till about 22, 23. 78 million uh, Americans are boomers. 13 million uh, will come into our state for some part of this, uh, of their lifetime. About, our population increase will be about four and a half million. Uh, we think we should be building about 120,000 homes a year. We're building in this state about 30,000 homes a year. So there's a huge amount of pent up demand and as soon as co consumer confidence changes, everything's gonna change. As soon as consumer confidence changes, everything's going to change because people's biological clock has been ticking and they are going to move to our state and it's just around the corner. Oh, another depressing slide. Birth rate down, family size down, family doubling up. Again, part of the home business, but when co consumer confidence changes, all those arrows will change and we'll be selling more homes and having the rest. Shift in human behavior. Of course, people bought for investment from us 2000 to 2005. They, uh, we would sell a home at the Harbridge, Gail, and we couldn't get them to come in and pick the kitchen. They wouldn't walk the site to save the trees. And what did we figure out? They weren't customers at all. They were speculators. So we survived in part because we put a provision in our contract that says, in, in, starting in June 2004, if you wanted to sell your home in the first year, you just had to sell it to me. And uh, we got rid of the speculators, which is one of the reasons that we survived. People look at homes for what they are, a consumer product, a place to live, a place to raise your family, a place to retire, a place to do laps in your pool. They're a consumer product that's a good investment, but they're primarily a consumer product. This is a shift. These are Lakewood Ranch uh, visitor projections. Notice that the visitors are way up. People are coming, and as soon as they have confidence in our economy, they are coming back. Again, the population, the uh, biological clock is ticking. Lakewood Ranch is, of course, the most successful planned development in this state. It will take over from the villages in size, Sherry, I think, within three years. This is the center of the development university in Florida and a very good place. It's a good example, and of course, Lakewood Ranch will precede our region out of the uh, recession. What's this? Is that a green pool? Okay, we're just, I guess this is to diss the, this is to diss the speculators, Craig. <laughs> this is what the speculators bought, and that pool is so green that it's not competition for us anymore. We see fewer of them. We see fewer of them. Most of them are being sold to turnaround artists who have to spend ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 repairing those homes or putting them in the rental pool. They're getting out of our shadow inventory, and they're really not part of our Lakewood Ranch history. Oh, how many here have kids? Remember that we have a huge cookie in the tax law right now that expires December 31st, 2012, uh, that raises the unitary exemption higher than it's ever been in history. We at Neil would like you to give your home to your child, Craig, so that you can buy a new home from us. <laughs> That's, uh, uh, and this, I think, is the most important slide for Neil. This would be a home in Eden Moore, but it's like any home that any builder bzzz, this is a very beautiful home built by nobody <laughs> who builds it quite as good as we do. But it's at Edenmore. But it's a place to live in. Raise your family. Watch the big game. Uh, work on your car as long as your car's in the garage. <laughs> it's not an investment. It's a place to live that should be a good investment if you buy now. People buy homes for every kind of reason. These are self-actualizers. They want the big home with that big thing above the door. What do, you, what do we call that door? Marion, that's a door that for the self-made uh, man, he says, I've got a big door. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a home for a, a young female with a child. That's the 947 uh, square foot home. It's a beautiful home and we build and sell a lot of them. But they buy it for every kind of reason, which we'll come back to. Here's the boomers, Here, here's their coming. Um, here's a little story about uh, Manatee. We talked about the inventory. Um, sadly, our business has been uh, dominated by local builders. Um, seven out of the top ten builders in Manatee and Sarasota County are national builders. Local builders have not had uh, success with financing. So we will have more and more domination by national builders, and I think that will be true of everywhere in Florida, which is 
going to be return as the number one building state. Uh, Neil has learned to compete with the nationals, and thus, um, when we do our own land, so we think we'll be uh, successful and a survivor in that market. <clears throat> Manatee County has had 13 quarters of reduced finished vacants. Manatee will improve first, Sarasota second, Charlotte third. Uh, Charlotte may be a long time from now with very inexpensive homes. And I'll close by saying, what do we have in Florida? Great sunshine, good quality of life, wonderful environment. No uh, state income tax, relatively low taxes, nice people, optimistic uh, atmosphere, and all the benefits that we all came here to Florida for. So when our nation, when our nation comes back, uh, Florida's come back, today we do have the triple, th uh, triple creation of good incentives, low prices, and the lowest mortgage rates, at least in my history. I think we can get a mortgage at Neil in the high fours, can we not? Uh, how much? Four. Who's got a 4% mortgage? I don't. Hey, Tram. Okay, Tram's got a 3% mortgage. But it's lower than uh, it's ever been. So, um, that's my story, and I'm sticking with it. I'll close by saying I'm blessed to be at Lakewood Ranch. I'm very thankful to be able to talk to uh, the Business Alliance, because you've done a lot of good here in Lakewood Ranch in our community. And... Uh, Oh, do I have another slide? Oh, buy now. So it's time to buy now uh, because it's the best time in history to buy, and this is the best place in history to buy. And uh, for those at Lakewood Ranch, I think you've created the best human location where you can work, play, worship, shop, and do all the rest. You've created 14,000 jobs in our community after everything we've done at the port and everything we've done on Highway 301. The jobs that are coming to our community are coming here because of quality of life, which is an important part of our magic here in Manatee. So thanks so much for having me. I had, I had fun. Did you have fun? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to take questions. What do you think the norm is now as we come back and come out of um, the foreclosure issues that we're in, the, the oversupply that's out there? The, I hear a lot of people say, once the market moves, I'm going to sell my house as well. You think we're back to 3, 4, 5 percent? Can you get me, can you you get me to that chart that years? had the, the curves? I want to go back to the chart with the curves. I think we are at the norm. I think the problem is right here. Not my head, by the way. Everybody else's head. People have... No, I want to go back to the column that shows that we really have less inventory than we've had for years. We have great prices, low interest rates, a wonderful community that's being successful. Um, the shadow inventory is, is uh, going away, and we have less houses on the market than we've ever had. So the, we're back to the norm, and we're actually below the norm in inventory. It all has to do with believing. Didn't uh, Dorothy, did, she had to believe. Didn't she have to take her red slippers and click them together? Isn't that what she did? We have to believe that things are going to get better. Prices are going to go up. Yeah, it's unavailable. Prices are going to go up. Florida's going to be fine. Employment, your job's going to be safe. Um, President, Go economy, President, whatever his name is, is going to lead us to uh, greater success. <laughs> and... Uh, we're at the norm. We actually reached the tangent a couple years ago, but we're perking along right along here. I predict that once we can change this, that we'll have a big boom in our state, and we won't be able to, and unless you're working at it now, you're not going to be able to catch up with the demand. That's my story. That's how we're co conducting our company. Our big land purchases are in Venice, and we're working hard in Naples because we think this is time to buy, and we have five people at Neil out buying land right now. That would be another question right here for you. Hi, you walk into a new house, how do you, if, if you're not a, a contractor, how, how can you quickly assess whether it's built well? Hmm, 1-800-NEAL. <laughs> how do you assess it? Okay. Oh, goodness. <clears throat> Lakewood Ranch is a place that has 16 really good builders, and to my knowledge, they don't allow bad builders in this community. 
The people who have been here have been here a long time, and they're capable, experienced builders. Lee Weatherington has been building in our town for 37 years, John Cannon for 30 years. We, quote, have learned how to do it. Three, I think the best, uh, best what we say at Neil is it's the 30-second look. Can you get that house, that beautiful house uh, there at Edenmore? I want to stand back at the curb, and I want to look at the landscape and the driveway, and I want to see if there's weeds growing in the driveway. I want to see the front door from the front. I want to see if the roof is right. I want to see if the roof flashing is right. Uh, I want to see if the uh, paint cut has been right on the uh, stucco. I want to see an accent trim and body color. Um, that's the one I wanted to see. I want to see if the windows are square. I want to see if the garage is square. Uh, and essentially, I want to see, just like if uh, you're in the Army, if your gig line is straight, who knows about the gig line? If your, gig, if your uniform is set up straight, that means the guy who built that house is paying attention. And my own view is that's definitely the story at our company. It's definitely the story at a lot of other companies. And then when you walk, walk through the door, if you want to, open the door, make sure the door is square, make sure the hinges are properly balanced. Look at the threshold and see if there's paint or any gradu on it. Look to see if the carpet goes up to the threshold. Look at the baseboard. Look if there's dirt on top of the baseboard. Look at the cove. Look at the texture to see if it's been properly done. Look at the texture on the walls and the stucco. And that means the guy who built that house was paying attention. And you can see a difference in houses here in uh, Lakewood Ranch. And some people really pay attention and some people really don't. But they're all good houses and they all stand through the hurricane. And they're all better houses than we built in 1969. Does that help? <laughs> And for a free consultation, you can see me after the week. We have another question here. Pat, thank you for your presentation. At the moment, what do you see as the, uh, what is your take on the current status of the residential uh, rental market where we're seeing a significant number of people who are coming out of foreclosed or short sales? Um, there's not enough rental properties to go around, and rents are on the rise and the apartment market is out of control. What, what, how do you see the connection between that and your business? That's a very important and sophisticated question, and my answer has one big blooper right in the middle, okay? The rental market is very strong right now because of all the people who can't buy a home. Everyone understands that. All the people who bought a home 2002 through 2005 can't buy a home because they have no credit score, so they're going into rental apartments, and rents now are about $1.05, $1.10 per square foot per month. So you can build a rental apartment. There's one, in, one now and one starting in uh, Manatee County. And to my belief, the only thing that's really stopping rentals is credit availability. Most of them solve that with 221D4, which is the federal guarantee program. So new rentals are really a good investment. Here's the blooper. About 80% of all the rentals in our community are single family detached homes that somebody else owns. And you can't find them in the Metro study statistics. 80% of the rentals are really just homes, and they're also that home that I showed you with the green swimming pool that's being turned into a rental and will be sold three or four years from now. So I think that makes some risk in the rental market. Um, third thing that's very important to us is if you can buy a home at Neal with a, or any builder with a 4% mortgage, you buy a $250,000 home, that's 6,000 a year divided by 12, that's $500 a month, add the ammo, 620 a month, you can actually buy a home from me cheaper than you can rent most homes. So uh, with those low interest rates and the fact that people who own their own homes self-maintain, that saves about $1,600 or $2,000 a year. So I think that I'm going to, with my lower priced homes, uh, um, I'll use a different phrase, uh, do a good job making sure we pull those rentals out into my homes. Every national builder in the United States is doing that. And I think we'll see a short-term bump in the rental market, but I don't think it'll be sustained. Does that help? Okay. Here. We're at time, but I'm here. Pat, thank you for your presentation. Um, and please don't judge me by my gig line. I can't see you. Oh, there oh, you are. I'm right here. Okay. Uh, well, let's look at your gig line. <laughs> um, okay, who knows what a gig line is? It's whether your tie and your belt and everything else is straight. Yeah, I'm all supposed to be a straight line. Okay. My body's not a straight line. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I, I met, you mentioned in your presentation that consumer confidence was, was the key to recovery. You also mentioned that even in your own business, you downsized almost two-thirds in terms of the number of people that you employ. I suspect that that's a trend that we've seen across the nation with employers, as well as a lot of employers just shutting their businesses down. 
how do you create consumer confidence when, when there are fewer jobs, there are fewer opportunities for young people coming out of school, there are fewer opportunities for veterans coming home from the war. How do you create the climate that says, hey, it's okay to spend $200,000? Well, you know, I'm doing it right here, right now. And I, everybody here is a business leader. Everybody here has a business. Everybody has an optimistic way they can look at, look at the world. And everybody can, sp you have the Great Commission, you can spread it on. That's why we have the Lakewood Ranch Business Alliance. Uh, type two, we have a president, uh, I'm gonna do a campaign speech right now, Craig, just a brief one. We have a president who's a downer. If we, if we could get a president who knew, understood free enterprise and where jobs are created, that would change things. Three, interest rates are almost nothing. Labor rates are down for us too. Uh, five, we've all streamlined our companies so that we can do more with less. So I think it's a, it's a time of huge opportunity. We have this great thing called, what Adam Smith called the Iron Hand in 1776. The Iron Hand says prices will go down low enough that people will buy and will have an exciting recovery. And I think, quote, that's just around the corner. I don't know where the corner is exactly, but will you find it right in here. Um, for people in Florida and states that have good economies, I came back from Minnesota, which has a great economy because corn is $7. Maybe not in Michigan, but those people are going to move here anyway. Thanks very much. I had fun. Uh, before I let everybody go, would everyone please grab their program? This is very important. Because if you look at the bottom two-thirds of your program, you're going to find all of the organizations that support the Lakewood Ranch Business Alliance as our annual sponsors. And I would just like to take this opportunity to say thank you to each and every one of them. You can see them on the program, and I'd like to give them a round of applause. Yeah. I refer to that as a segue. So. It's 2011, and these are our 2011 sponsors. 2011 is coming to a very fast close. So, if you are looking for that additional exposure and looking to separate yourself and put a financial investment into an organization that you believe in and have a passion for, then I would definitely encourage each and every one of you to strongly consider being an annual sponsor for 2012. That's a sales pitch, right? So there it is. And it's a very good investment, um, and I would encourage everyone to take that opportunity. Um, looking at a couple things that are coming up, uh, we had to save the date with the Sandys, our inaugural Sandys. That's going to be a great event. Uh, we also have an upcoming executive briefing, September 21st. All of our executive briefings uh, are at Kaiser University. Starts at 7.30 in the morning. I know it's early, but it's the perfect time to get out and uh, experience some of the great speakers that we have, uh, who in this case is going to be Ray Rear with Innovative CFO. Um, and Ray uh, has a, a great presentation he's going to deliver. We heard a little bit about 3 4% mortgages. I know Tran's number has been broadcast to the entire audience here today. And uh, we're talking about how do you attain that capital. So Ray, great presentation. Encourage everyone to be there. Uh, the last one I'll mention is Breakfast of Champions. How many people here know who Ryan Neese is? All right, yep. Super Bowl 37. Champion, Buccaneers, I mean, that was good times, right? So uh, Ryan is going to be delivering a motivational piece, um, talking about uh, what he's got going on, uh, about that experience as being a Super Bowl champion, probably a pretty cool thing. And I would encourage everyone to attend October the 12th. That's held the Lakewood Ranch Country Club. Um, and you also should have a sheet at your table. If not, we have these sheets in the back available that talks about additional information on the sponsorship. So please pick those, uh, pick those up and take a look. And then um, there are some additional opportunities with the Sandys for advertisements. So make sure that uh, you guys take a look at that. And I'm done with all of my pitches. I hope everyone enjoyed Pat's excellent presentation. Pat, thank you again. And you are officially dismissed. <laughs>